Hello and welcome to Lexitecture, a podcast about word origins and histories. My name is Ryan, and in each episode my friend Amy and I bring a new pair of words to share their stories with each other and you. You can find our past episodes and the occasional blog post on our website at lexitecture.com, follow along with us on Twitter and Facebook at Lexitecture, and if you really like what we do, you can support the show at patreon.com slash lexitecture. Today's episode, Vocable Fetish. Words. We'd better do some words. We should do some words. Yeah. Do you want uh, to go first? Do so I go yeah, first? For, I'll, I'll go first cool. if, you, if, that, if that works, yeah. It does um, indeed. So I was trying to find a thematically appropriate Halloween-y word. Do you it's know, I didn't even think of that. That's how out of the, the real world loop I am currently. And, well, that's fair. You've been elsewhere, but and and we so we've done ghost. I, I took a look at you know words like mummy and scary mm-hmm. and vampire, which I have to note is is kind of cool, just because like there's not actually a lot of a story behind the word vampire, mm. but it does have its roots in old church Slavonic, which of just course. makes sense to me. Yeah, absolutely. It just feels right. I'm nodding sagely uh, there, as if I knew that. I didn't know it, but I'm not surprised. No, it's like, yeah, well, obviously. Um, and then I looked up the word zombie. Okay. Which is kind of cool. But zombie led me to the word that I'm actually doing, which is not all that Halloween-y and is the word fetish. Oh. Okay. So, um, I, I'm just going to pause for a minute to say the okay. internet is a fucking terrifying place when zombie yes. led you to fetish. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, We'll get there. It's, <laughs> and I mean, I guess... Buckle up. Well, anyway. Um, if, yeah, that's right. <laughs> if you had to guess how old the word fetish is, even just like down to a century. Okay, so... Well, where do you well, think? Well, the, the first thing I'm thinking is, has it retained land. its sexy, sexy meaning all the, the time that, that it's existed? Which I'm sure you're going to tell us in a minute. But it's probably pretty old you know but i i think if i had to pin it down i'd go for like the 14th century oh okay cuz i was i was slightly surprised it the answer to your first question is no okay but the earliest oed citation is 1613 okay so that was older than i thought it was but i think you know it's partly and and you would know this being a teacher and seeing God. sort of successive There's no phrase years and generations of children. Greater fear into my heart than when people say that. Well, being a teacher, <laughs> you will of course know, oh no. Um, well, yeah. And also just being a human who has, you know, interacted with other humans and, and lived through phases of life. Every generation that thinks that they are the first to do things. Oh yeah. Like kids just kind of assume like like teenagers just kind of assume that they both invented and have a complete monopoly over like sex yeah. and sexy things and yeah, they absolutely and, and do. rebelliousness and and that's why it's so foreign that's why the concept of previous generations engaging in these things is weird uh... to them and slightly unnatural because they're like no but we made that <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's it's, and wild, everyone else is it? like, I I no, had a, had an interaction with a class last year. I was writing on a writing on a whiteboard, and I I wrote something, and and it was wrong, and I rubbed it out, and I went to write it again, and I and I I, I rubbed it, I got it wrong again, and I said, oh, why is everything so hard today? And way back, way back at the corner <laughs> of the room, somebody went, that's what she said, and without turning around to face the room, I said. <laughs> You know, we had, that's what she said, jokes when I was your age too. I don't need them anymore. And, and the class sort of giggled for a bit and then we just moved on. But but yeah, you're, you're right, you know. Yeah. It's, yeah. And maybe that's, maybe that's why I thought it was new. But in, in answer, going back to your first question of whether it retained its, its current meaning, uh, no, the current meaning goes back to right at the very beginning of the 20th century. So 1901 okay. is the first usage in the modern sense in the OED. And delightfully, it's from the very end of the era where books, like the book titles just 
basically were a synopsis of the book. Wonderful. Instead of just a title. So here's the title of the book that it came from because I can't help myself. It is. Oh, I thought the book was the called Dictionary... because I can't help myself. Oh, <laughs> chortle, oh, I, I mean, that would that would be appropriate for the first use of the word fetish, but. It was from the Dictionary of Philosophy and Psychology, including many of the principal con conceptions of ethics, logics, aesthetics, philosophy of religion, mental pathology, anthropology, biology, neurology, physiology, economics, political and social philosophy, philology, physical science and education, and giving a terminology in English, French, German, and Italian. Holy shit. Nobody was marketing <laughs> that, were they? No. Because nobody has not. energy enough to market a book called... No that <laughs> that yeah snappy titles were not a thing no. at the end of the 1800s Nobody and apparently not. the very beginning of the 1900s <laughs> but in this sense now this was interesting to me as well because in my head there was a slightly like fetish now is even a slightly different definition than this but maybe it's just me but the definition here is an object a non-sexual part of the body or a particular action which abnormally serves as the stimulus to or the end in itself of sexual desire. And I I think in my head, and maybe again, maybe this is just maybe this is just me, but usually the answer to that is no. Um, I didn't think it had to be tied to something specifically non sexual. Yeah. In order to be a fetish. Yeah, that's, that's... I thought a fetish was just like someone's thing. Someone's thing is like probably how their... I, I would have described it too. If that's their thing, that's you know that's that that applies as opposed to like this. It sort of the abnormally serves as yeah. the stimulus to or the end in itself of like that's. But I mean that's the thing. I, I hate to be the one to point this out because it is terrible uh, in all senses. But you know the way that people write about sex is crazy assed. You know. Well, yeah. The way that society thinks about sex, the way that you know, I I, I hate to to be the one to point it out, but. In the 1900s, they, um, their attitudes to sex were somewhat different, shall we say. You know, I, like it's, well, and the attitudes I, that got written down, yeah, sure, were very by, much different by the old rich white men. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 you like could... exactly as you're saying. You know, who thinks of the Victorians as being into pornography? That is but a they super were. That is a concept that people go, huh? They super wear. There's tons oh. of Victorian pornography. Some of it's like Christmas filth. cards. Like yeah. just absolute. And yeah. And so the the notion that because nobody was talking about a thing, nobody did it. Like you know, it's yeah. yeah. It's 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 pretty wild. And I, I think that there's probably the, the only thing more kind of gate kept and kind of I want to use the word twisted. I mean, twisted for socio-political ends. I think the only th the only thing that's perhaps more prone to that than sex is religion. Right. Yeah. Also, I really like how the way you enunciated "old rich white men" made them sound like eldritch white men. <laughs> <laughs> yes, those two. And I like that. <laughs> I love the word eldritch. Just... I feel like it doesn't get enough usage. It doesn't. But now that we're going to have to make a new t-shirt or something. Eldritch white man. Eldritch white man. <laughs> Just these like Lovecraftian <laughs> aristocrats. Yeah, I can totally picture yeah. what an eldritch white man looks like. Although, if you're going to call so them eldritch good. white men, then they're clearly some kind of secret society. Shadowy figures. Well, yeah. Yeah. But fair enough. Anyway, continue. So... <laughs> Tangents. I digress. Um, yeah. <laughs> So that's where that, uh, the, I mean, as close as we get to the current use, which may or may not have evolved since then or whatever, sure. but that's from 1901. Prior to that, it actually comes from Portuguese. Mm. And it's the term, and this is where uh, the connection between fetish and zombie came in, is because it was from the Portuguese sailors exploring around West Africa. Okay. And then, and, and West Africa is where the word zombie comes from as well. Sure. And it's from the local indigenous religions and such around there. The word fetish was from the Portuguese word that they used to describe basically any small little trinket or charm or doodad, 
I believe is the technical term, that the local people would attribute some sort of higher power. So a, a ceremonial thing. A goblet, that a they necklace, would... a carpet, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, beads or a small statue or uh, something they would hold in their hands or, you know, like a like the equivalent of like a rabbit's foot or a, sure. a crucifix or a rosary or whatever. Those, that was what that applied to. Those were fetishes. And then annoyingly, because settlers and explorers and con col or, um, colonials, why is that word hard to say Colonial for me right now? Colonial littles. Colonialisticals. Those They have to ruin everything. <laughs> the Those Eldritch guys, White They got to ruin everything. The Eldritch White Men have to ruin everything. <laughs> uh, this is one of these words that started out, I mean, it probably didn't even start out all that innocuous, but has gained more negative and marginalized connotations over time. Because by the early 1800s, it, it, a fetish was just uh, something irrationally reverenced, is what it was used for. So, it was, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so it probably was never all that innocuous because it was probably the same sailors that had their rabbit's foot. I mean, sailors are just sailors, uh, man. Uh, yeah, famously superstitious and you know knickknacks and trinkets and traditionals and but they are superstitions. superstitions all over the place. None of these foreign superstitions. We don't want no, any no, of that but trash. There's, they make sense because they're mine, yeah. you see. Those ones are dumb. Mine keep me on the top of the water. It's pretty wild, isn't um, it? Yeah, very weird. The lack of self-awareness is a one of the peak human traits, I think. But yeah, so it, it had gone from those uh, ceremonial and reverenced knickknacks to anything irrationally reverenced. And then that's where it comes into the idea of something. Uh, ah, the so irrationally like, reverenced part is like abnormally yeah, so like it's serving weird another that purpose. You find this sexy. Oh, yeah, I'm, like it's, I'm upset by this, Ryan. I, I know. Yeah. I'm ruining things for people <laughs> vicariously through the stupid Portuguese sailors and eldritch white men. But yeah, so that's that's basically where it comes from. And it's sort of so it's, I don't know, I don't know where to go with it because it's it's kind of interesting because it's almost like one of these words that has sort of been reclaimed, I think, mm, if we yeah, want to yeah. be able to put some sort of positive spin on it. Because I don't think it has that, like I say, I don't think it has that connotation anymore. Yeah, I, I, I think, I, I think you've picked a beautiful example of, of how politicized language can be. Um. You know, yeah. if, if you were looking to do that, then this this word is an absolute diamond. Um, but I I feel like a as a society we are more open to talking about and thinking about and looking at and experiencing sex. I, th I think that you know, even though the Victorians were into porn, I feel like the internet would still raise some oldie eyebrows. Um, <laughs> yeah, it certainly raises some so. modern eyebrows. But I I. I I think that it is kind of like hopefully we're moving in a direction where like my my personal take on sexuality is I do not care if you need three whistles, a goat, you know, a, a block of ice and the dawn chorus to be played in headphones that only on you can see whistle. on a slide whistle yeah. in order to achieve orgasm. If you are doing that with consenting adults who are enjoying themselves and you are enjoying yourself and nobody's getting hurt in the process, then go for your life. Like, I do not care what a person yeah. needs to get jiggy. The only reason I'm ever going to care about that is if I'm getting jiggy with them. You know, that like, otherwise it is literally yeah. none of my business. And yeah. while, you know, there's, there's a part of me that goes, oh, there are people who have sex with cars. That's unusual. It's like, well... Phew, there are plenty worse things that the world could be doing than having sex with cars, <laughs> I suppose. But do I get it? No. Yeah. Do yeah. I exactly. Care? And, and I, I, mean, I don't no. have to get it. Like it's, I, I absolutely do not have to get it. Go and, and enjoy yourself with whatever particular color, make me metallic presentation, whatever it is that makes cars sexy. Enjoy that. Good for you. <laughs> but but yeah, I I really object to the to this word. Well, I mean. I kind of object to it having been 
taken from a religious cultural setup and and then trashed. But but then I, I yeah. really object to to that then being used to make people feel weird about sex. Like let's mm. just not make people feel weird about sex. Let's just not do it. Yeah, like, just do the thing. It, it is weird, but like it's it's a weirdness that we all share. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's so that's fetish. And just to wrap it up, the yeah, so that's and before Portuguese, it was from Latin and specifically facere, f a c e r e r, meaning to make or produce. It's from a Proto Indo European root meaning to set or put, and it gives us words like difficult, benefit, or edifice. Oh, but nice. Because it's just a, it's a. Originally, it was just a thing, right? Because they just had to give a word to this, so it was just like a. A duda. Basically like calling something an artifact. Yeah. But in Portuguese it worked out to be the word was that came up was fetish. But yeah, so that's where we get uh that's where we get fetish. Nice. So And also I'm now looking forward to this episode title, so yeah, well I, I was just about to say this this is a this this is interesting because the word that I'm talking about today is I I found it on Reddit. <laughs> I'm I'm not ashamed okay. to say that. Uh, you know, I I um I read about it on a random Reddit um thread it as I like to call them in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why subreddits just never really done it for me. I like Reddit thread it, yeah. um, and and I just thought, oh, that's an interesting little word, and I've never seen it before. And then I realised that it it was an interesting little word that I'd never seen before. That well, I thought it was quite interesting because. This word describes things which aren't words at all. And the word is vocable. Hmm. V-O-C-A-B-L-E. And I, I think that... Interesting. You know, what's, what I found interesting about it was I, I read about this on the internet first as a little kind of factoid about language and thought, oh, cool. Hmm, yeah, I'm, I'm going to talk about that at some point. And then when I, when I started looking into it in, you know, via my usual kind of research pathways, I found something quite cool in the OED. God love the, OE, the OED. So yeah. the word vocable, um, is the earliest citation in the OED is from 1440. And the first wow. meaning of the word vocable is that which a person or thing is called, a designation or a name. And so oh. this this is a word for a word kind of thing. So later, more generally, an item of vocabulary, a lexical item, a word, and chiefly somewhat literary in later use. This, this is what it says. By the later 18th century, the word was sometimes regarded as a distinctly Scottish usage. However, it had never fallen entirely out of general use and appears to have fully re-entered general circulation by the 19th century. So the, the, that very first citation that we have from the life of St Norbert by J Capgrave, Sclaus and Saxons are they called by name. The one of them is named full of sharpness. The other hath a vocable of high fame. So the the word that describes the thing that is that which a person is called. Yeah, that's that's how it goes. Now this was not the usage that I had been so had my interest piqued by on Reddit. Right. And right. what I found was that when I went to the the second meaning given in the OED that. This isn't really that either. So I found myself <laughs> slightly arguing with the OED, which is always a, a tenuous place to be. But this certainly gets mm -hmm. closer to the, the meaning that, that I had read about. So the second meaning given is a syllable or sound without lexical or referential meaning, vocalised as part of a song or sung melody. So when you say da 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 you are using vocables. However, the meaning that I uh, came across in my random facts about language uh, chat says, and this is just from Wikipedia, um, Webster's Dictionary had this this sort of definition, and I have completely forgotten the third dictionary that I looked at. Um, but the, all, the the other two had this had this this kind of shade of of the sense. So Wikipedia says, in the broadest sense of the word, a vocable is any meaningful sound uttered by people, such as a word or term that is fixed by their language and culture. 
However, use in the broad sense is archaic. The term is currently used for utterances which are not considered words, such as the English vocables of assent and denial, uh uh-huh and uh uh-uh, or the vocable of error, uh uh-uh. (laughs) And and I, I was just delighted to find that there's a word for these words. Other vocables are pause fillers like ah uh, or uh or ums. Those little noises that we make, sometimes the little noises that we make that other people immediately know what we mean by them. And sometimes those little noises right. that we make where nobody really pays any particular attention to them, they are just noises somewhere right. in, the, in the middle. And what's interesting about vocables is that they occur in other languages, not just English. Of course, there's a colonialist uh, attitude right. for you, but uh, <laughs> but, but the 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 sort of universality of of vocables. I feel like I could spend a lot of time figuring that out. And uh, one of yeah. the things that this made me think of, um, boomer meme alert, was the minions. Yes, because because the minions watched, have a language, yeah. if you like, but. But you can absolutely understand what they're saying, even though you don't recognise any of the words as words. Yeah, yeah. So I was, uh, I, I was interested to to find that that there's there's a word for those little noises that minions make and that babies make and that adult humans who know far more expressive words still find themselves, yeah. uh huh, mm, yeah, mm, making these these little noises. There's also this the sense that's given in the OED as uh, non-lexical vocables being used in music, so da 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 or la la la's or like hey, scat no, syllables no. and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Um, the kind of sounds that are right. made by by singers and 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 that is a a feature that you find in Native uh, American, Indigenous American songs and cultures. You find it pretty mm. much in every place and in every language that's that's got songs, which is kind of everywhere. And I had to make a little bit of an etymological leap to consider the the etymology of this word. What the OED has to say is that it's it's from Middle French vocable, vocable, from French uh, vocable, meaning designation or name. And um, this was in usage 13th century, second half of the 13th century, late 14th century, but it became sort of word. And and this comes to us from Latin vocabulum, meaning word, which is of course the word which gives us vocabulary. And you can you can go back uh, via vocabulary, and Etym Online tells us that vocabulary, a list of words with explanations, which is related to vox, which is clearly of the same family as, as vocable, comes right. from a pie root. Wekwe. Now, interestingly, Etym Online writes Wekwe as W E K W, but the um, the University of Texas at Austin's Linguistic Research Center, the, 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 the Indo European lexicon, Pi Etym and I reflexes. <laughs> just since we're we're doing whole titles, uh, they spell it as U E K U Wekwe. You can see that the, the pronunciation oh, okay. is essentially the same. But it was it was an interesting little quirk while I was uh, looking in the index to find out a bit more about it. That I realised that that the University of Texas at Austin's list doesn't recognise W as a a pi root letter, if you like. Oh, okay. However, right. the the pi root simply means to speak or to talk to voice or to speak or to evoke. And so this gives us all sorts of quite obvious cognates, I think, in English. You have things like advocate, the person who speaks for Mm. someone, Um, avocation, a distraction or a diversion. You can convoke when you call a meeting. We have um, epic, as in the the long narrative poem. I found that particularly interesting because I, I was talking to somebody about this recently, I can't remember who it was, we were talking about the fact that the the Odyssey and the Iliad, which we look at as books of words written down, it's believed that the Odyssey and the Iliad were entirely orally transmitted for a long, long time before anybody thought right, to write yeah, them yeah. down. Yeah? yeah, and uh, that 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 really that fills me with misty-eyed thoughts of Neolithic villages five thousand years ago where some guy with a long beard and a hardy cloak appeared in the middle of the night 
while it was raining and didn't have anything to trade except a story that nobody had heard. <laughs> And yeah. I, you know, I'm I'm glad I'm not a Neolithic person, but there's something really magical about that as, as transmission, as as stories, you know. Yeah. Um. It also made me think that the epic, you know, as in a, a long narrative poem, that sense it it made me think of of the word saga, and there's a there's a saga that features Orkney. It's called the Orkneyinga, and I had a little look at the, at the word saga just just because it you know it was sort of adjacent to the thing that I was looking at and saga's etymology is cognate with old english sagu which means a saying so same same sort of thing both an epic and a saga are stories which are told words which are said out loud um so while i'm really grateful for books the notion of oral transmission of stories is is something that i i get quite excited about um yeah so we we also have words like uh, equivocal, um, having more than one meaning, evoke, revoke, vocable, vocation, voice, and vowel. So not much has changed in terms of the the sound, the pronunciation, the the, the obvious parts of the of the pirate. But yeah. I did uh, mm, uh, mm, think that these little <laughs> uh, noises that we don't necessarily think about, I I, I found it quite interesting that they had a name. And so that's vocables. Yeah, that's interesting. I was, this is one of those words that sounds entirely like the, a kind of word that it isn't. Because to me, I, I, I just assumed that we were talking about an adjective, like, like capable or. Yeah, yeah, sure. Like something capable of being pronounced or that, that was the, where it was going to go, but it never went there, which is. Interesting. There, but... there is a, an adjective vocable that's listed in the in the OED, and it's right. uh, interesting that the first citation given it says neither of them, the devil and the serpent, have been able to seduce or beguile mankind, vocable or visible, and vocable or Ooh. visible. It, it says it's apparently an isolated use. It's rather lovely. It means by words yeah. or by actions. So. You can't convince them by words. Cool. You can't convince them by things that, that you've seen. But I like invocable or, or visible. Um, and, and the yeah. use that, that you would perhaps think about, capable of being uttered or spoken, um, that's cited in 1861. And the last one is in 2008. So, you know, a, 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 oh, an adjective okay. that's, that's still around to being used. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I also like that. Yeah, because there's always there's loads of those things. And I like the two categories of... Things that are meant to be and almost always are understood, even without context or yeah. without uh, agreement or prior discussion, like just from context. You know, like like you were saying about the Minions language in the Despicable Me and Minions movies, yeah. or like something like Womp Womp, <laughs> like for dis a disappointing turn of events, or you know, like or even or things there's like the other ones. Ow! You know, yeah. most human beings, I, I, I feel like they'd, they'd get that. Or there's the ones that aren't, you know, they aren't intended to convey anything, any meaning at all. They're just, they're just there. They're, they're, they don't have a, a discrete packet of information mm. that they're carrying along with them. They're just, like you say, filler or, uh, hmm, you know, something like that, but. That's really interesting. The enemy of podcasters, I suppose. If if you're <laughs> yeah. a person with a scripted podcast, A, God bless you because it's hard. But oh, also, I suppose you then give yourself an extra layer of difficulty because you have to write the thing, but you also have to perform. The th you know, I, I don't feel like this is performance. I feel like we have a chat and it's... it's I, yeah. I, I also know there are people out there who hate conversational podcasts, um, which is fine. Yes. I can take that. Yeah. Um, but I, I do feel that one of the benefits of conversational podcasts is, well, for me, it's it's a lot more comfortable and and I'm not a mm -hmm. voice performer, you know, so I would find it very difficult to read from a script and sound interesting and natural. Turns out that stuff's quite hard, as we have discovered every single time we've tried to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is very difficult. But yeah, so there we go. Vocable fetish. Vocable fetish. Mm. <laughs> that kind of describes, I guess, people who listen to 
word podcasts Absolutely. like this. <laughs> It's a much nicer, uh, much nicer turn of phrase than word nerd. <laughs> You're not a nerd. You just have a vocal fetish. <laughs> and that's it for another episode of Lexitecture. To get in touch with us about something you heard in this episode, you can email us at words at lexitecture.com. You can also follow along and talk to us at Lexitecture on Facebook and Twitter and at Lexitecture Podcast on Instagram. For back episodes and the occasional blog post, visit us at lexitecture.com. Thanks very much, and we'll talk to you again soon.